Welcome back to Coding in a Cup of Java, lecture number three, loops. So before the, the, the break we had an example there when we used the while loop to, to loop through a specific amount of times. But like I said, we have another type of loop called the for loop and we can use that to loop through a specific amount of time. So the syntax is something along these lines, I will discuss it in more in depth in a second. So this is a very simple example of a of a for loop. Like this. So we just have one statement in there that prints out the value i. So what we're doing here is that we have three different uh, parts here. We have this part there, we have a semicolon, and then we have that part, and then another sem semicolon, and then that part there. So this part here, you might recognize it, it's a simple uh, variable declaration. So we declare the variable i of type integer, and then we set its value to zero. So that's the initial value. Then, oops. Sorry about that. M messing things up. So here we go again. Uh, <coughs> just derping a bit. So the what I was talking about here was the for loop, uh, and we have three different parts. We have this part here, we have that part there, and that part there. So they are separated by the se semicolons here that I was talking about. And the first part, like I was talking about, is the variable declaration part. So you have the int i equals zero. Uh, so we're declaring the variable i and we set its initial value to zero. The second part you might recognize as a condition. It's a relational operator so we check that i is less than 10 so that's our condition. And then here we're uh, modifying the, uh, the variable. So there we go with i plus plus we increase that by one. So what we're actually doing is first of all we're creating the variable i. We set this value to zero. Each time we loop through, we're going to increase the, the variable i with 1. And then we're going to continue as long as the condition is true here. And that's while i is less than 10. So all of a sudden we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 9. And of course, we don't have to have plus plus here. We can have like plus equals to 2. So we can have 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and the next time we're increasing i, we get 10, and that's too big, um, and uh, therefore we lex it out. But of course, we don't have to have addition if we don't want to. We can have multiplication, that's totally fine. But of course, this is going to create an infinite loop. Yes, because I started with with uh, with 0, and if you start with 0 and just multiply with 2 all the time, you're not going to get anywhere. Uh, so <laughs> look out for what you're doing. So if we want to do that, we could, for instance, do that and then start at 1. Then it's going to be better, and we just get 1, 2, 4, and 8. And we can also change the condition like this. We can like start at 10 instead and loop while i is greater than 0 and then subtract 2 each time instead. So, so you can do whatever you want to. So you have the, the part where you declare the variable, you have the part where you, well, the condition part, and then you had a modif uh, modifying part, how much you want to modify the variable with. Um, <coughs> um, but one of the questions in the, in the chat was, can you do... Uh, can you use a variable that is already declared somewhere else? And yes, you can. So, <coughs> so you can do something like this, and then you do number equals 20, and um, then we do number is greater than zero, and then we do, the, let's decrease that by five each time, like so. And then just print that out in, in a similar way. So as you can see here, I've done, done two things. First of all, I just renamed the variable um, to number. Um, it doesn't really matter, it's just the name of the variable. And second of all, um, I'm creating it here. And as you can see now, I'm not declaring the variable, I'm just setting its initial value. So as you can see up here, I'm using, uh, well, declaring a variable of the type i by typing the type there and then the variable name there. And uh, therefore, we have we, we started uh, with number as 2313. 2313. But as soon as we start the loop, we'll set number to 20, and then we loop through uh, as long as number is greater than zero, and then we decrease it by five each time. So then we can do something like that. 
and now just because we um, we declared it uh, before we actually started a loop, we can reach it afterwards. So we can do uh, we can do like this final number, and then we can add uh, do a number like so. And um, if so, we'll get final number zero. We can't do this if we just declare the variable inside here. Then we can't reach the the variable outside of the loop. But now, since we're using a number we already had, a variable that was declared before the loop, we can simply just refer to it like any other variable because it's just a variable, obviously, we created up here. Uh, but now we get 20, 15, 10, and finally 5 from inside a loop. And that's quite all right. We have 20. We print it out, we decrease it by 5, we print out 15, we decrease it by 5, we print out 10, we decrease it by 5 and print out 5. We decrease it by 5, we get 0. 0 is not greater than 0, therefore we'll exit out. But as you realize, we decrease it still, of course. We went down to 0 to, to make sure that the condition wasn't true and therefore we're going to leave the variable with the value of 0, even though it will never have that inside the actual loop. So that's that's that, but but we can do something else as well. This is a bit silly. We have one number here and uh, we have one number here. If we want to, we don't have to have an initial value. We can remove that completely and run it again. Now it's going to run for quite some time because we had a quite high initial value, um, and it's going to end up with a final number of two. Um, and as you can see, I'm still having the semicolon here, and that's important. Uh, the reason why we have it there is is because well we we need the three parts we need the initial part we need the condition part and we would need the modification part but they can be they can be blank they can all be blank but we still need them uh, so we so we have an empty spot here where we where we have our initial value which is no code at all so, so we can't just remove it if we do that it's not going to understand what the hell we're doing. Um, so, so just leave the, the semicolon there, but you can remove that part if if you want to. And we can do the same thing here. We can we can remove the uh, the modification here. Uh, now now we get an infinite loop all of a sudden because we're not changing the number. But we can we can just cha we can just cha change it in here instead. So you like add ten to it. So we're actually increasing it. But then we can I don't know decrease it here. Whatever, Depen it can depend on th different things. So, so if you don't want it to be decreased uh, or increased there, you can, you can you can remove that part. Of course, now all of a sudden we have a while loop. We just have a condition here. That's the only thing we have. We have removed the initial value and we have moved the removed the modification part. But but it's still possible to do so. And now all of a sudden we will get those numbers, so we will uh, increase it by 10 and then decrease it by 200. And if we want to, we can remove the last part as well. So all of a sudden we get get an infinite loop, we get a, a wild true loop, well the same thing as a wild true. And if we want to, we can just add our own condition in here. Um, so if we're le when we're less than zero, then we, then we want to break out. As you can see, um, we can't remove the parts we don't like, but at the moment, I don't know, uh, you can do that, this part here, or while true, it doesn't matter. I think this looks a bit cooler, but it might be a bit tricky to, to <laughs> know what it's doing. So we, we had 43 here, then we decrease it by, by 200 and uh, reach 157, because we also do increase it by, by 10. Um, so, um, so yeah, uh, so we, we just loop it through here without changing the number at all. Um, but yeah, so you can remove the parts you don't want to, uh, but usually you go with all three, and it's when you use most of them that that it comes in handy. Um, so so yeah, so that that was that part. Now let's actually use it properly, and let's go back to the the um, example we had before the uh, the break here. So we had a a um, a variable here, solved questions, and then we looped through. Well, that was less than five, and then we increased it each time we had it correct. Uh, while well, we answered it correctly, if we want to, we can use a for loop here instead. Um, it doesn't really matter; you can use a while loop as easily. But if we want to, we can do solve questions. We start at zero. Uh, we do it while solve questions. 
is less than five and then we increase that each time we loop through there and we do it like that and then we remove that line there so all of a sudden we we're, we're doing it with a for loop instead each time we loop we will increase it by one and since we're breaking out as soon as you failed uh, it won't increase that by one if um, if you're um, well if you're wrong basically and as you can see you can still use breaks and stuff it's not like all right you can't do it just because it's a for loop and uh, and yeah but observe also that if you use continue it's going to to use the increment part here uh, anyway so if you continue it's going to increase the solved questions for instance if we use that and uh, check the condition so so it's not just going to check the condition it's going to to increase it as well but when we're breaking out we will we'll, we'll, we will ignore that but as you can see I'm also declaring it all uh, all the way up here and then you're setting the value there and that's because we want to access it afterwards so we need to declare it outside of the loop itself And there you go. Um, so we have the same thing here. If I type something wrong, like three, then out you failed. I uh, didn't complete anything. Uh, but then if I run it again, and uh, uh, whatever this is, one one sixteen, that's correct. And then if I type something that's wrong, then it's still then it says that well you managed to solve one out of five questions. So it still works. It's um, in this case it's you can do it both. Uh, uh, both ways you can use the while loop or the for loop and you can always like pick which one you want but th there are like uh, times when 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 you well when it's easy to use the for loop when you know the amount of times you want to loop through it's quite handy to use it so so without further ado I'm going to continue with with another example it's a very short example with the for loops and I'm I'm going to do a nested for loop example and nested loops are basically loops in sh inside each other and um, it can be quite compact and it's a nice example of the for loop in my opinion so um, no user input here just a uh, very basic program here so like that the the main there and um, then we do a loop here so usually if you don't know what name? What what you call your loop? You go with I. No, that's like what most people do. And um, actually, I want to start it at one there, and I increase it like that. So I'm going to loop uh, from one to uh, to twelve. So I I started one, and I'm, the last time I'm going through it, I'm going to go through it with I equals to to twelve, and then I can do four int uh, J. So I'm actually putting another loop in here, and that's actually going to do the exact same thing. It's going to go through the same values, like so. Um, and then I'm going to print out inside here, I'm going to print out this. So, so what I'm doing now is creating a table of um, a multiplication table um, like this. And then system dot out dot. And here I want to print out a new line, and you can do so by just print and then go backslash n if you want to, or if you want to, you can remove uh, the part there and do print line of nothing. So you basically print out nothing and then you print out a new line. So if we do this here, compile it. then we get this table here so very straightforward uh, to create this multiplication table the reason why it's aligned properly is because I'm using this backslash T that's the tab so it's basically putting a tab here all the time and therefore it's aligning properly even though I have three characters here while I only have two up here for instance or three here while I while I have yeah you know two, two up here as well um, so, so that's the tab there, and then I'm making sure to to move down a line here in the end. Um, so basically, we loop through i 12 times. Each time we loop uh, through i, uh, we loop through j t 12 times. So j is basically when we move uh, to the right here, and then we, uh, when we reach the end of 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 it here, 
when, when that condition is true, we're going to print out a new line. So that's when we jump down back here. Uh, and therefore we, we um, will reach the end here. And i is going to be increased, so that's the next line. And then we're going to loop through j again. And then we're going to print out a new line, increase i, loop through j again, and so on and so forth. So, so when we go to the right, it's j, and then w when we go further down, we, we increase i, because i is the, the outer loop. And in the end, we get 12 by 12, and that's 144. So just a very simple example of the multiplication table there. Um, some nested for loops, and it's very, very simple to do when, it, when you use for loops. We know we want to loop through 12 times in the other loops, and for each time we do that, we know we want to loop through 12 times as well. So very simple, very straightforward. Right, so let's see if we can take a look of, of a, another example. So this example we're going to use user input and it's going to be about uh, strings. So we're going to um, loop through strings uh, with a for loop. And uh, then after we've done that, we're going to see how we can actually use the for each loop as some of you have commented in the, uh, in the Twitch chat. We just going to, because it doesn't really belong here, it belongs to the next lecture about arrays. But uh, we'll touch it a bit, so it, it's going to be sort of a bit of an introduction to the next, um, uh, let's see, string looping example, uh, the next uh, lecture. But but more to that when we when we when we get closer to to that. So uh, just a simple thing here: public static void main uh, string square brackets args, and then we do scanner my scanner. We need scanner to get user input. Dot uh, in there we go. And then we do. Uh, uh, yeah, we print something else to the user. So this example is going to be about uh, well, the user are allowed to enter a string. Please enter this sentence to uh, to search in. So we're going to search in a sentence, and we're not going to search for a specific uh, sequence of characters or something like that. That's actually one of the exercises, the further exploration exercises uh, in the questions and exercises document. But we're going to count the amount of characters that we have of each type of the characters we, we give it. So, um, so it's going to be a nested for loop as well. We're going to loop through uh, twice there. Uh, but you will see. So we ask for the next line, so we get all all the uh, the words, uh, not only the first one. Uh, so we can enter spaces system dot uh, dot print line like that. Let's get rid of this. There you go. Um, and here you go. Please enter the characters to search for like that. And then we just read that string characters equals. Um, well, we do. Let's do le next line here as well, because then the user can enter like spaces and such. Um, so, if you want to count the amount of spaces in, in the uh, uh, in the the first sentence, then it's fine and you can do so. So, first of all, we want to loop through the different characters because we want to find the the amount of if if we type in a sequence of 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 characters, like the first one, the sentence here, and then we type in, for instance, A, B, C. Then we first wanted to tell us how many A's do we have in, in this sentence, how many B's do we have, and finally how many C's. So we need to go through these different characters, and to do so, we simply have a, a for loop, which go from, goes from zero to the, the length of the um, of the string. So characters.length, since characters are string, we can just do characters.length and then we'll get the amount of characters that we have there. So we start at zero and we end just before the length there. So we have get all the indices. So we so we start at zero and then we, we so that's the first character and then we end at character char characters.length minus one, which is the last character. And we want to ca um, count how many uh, characters we found. So let's have a variable for that. And then we have a uh, variable for uh, what we're looking for, which is one, one a character. So obviously, because it's of char type. Um, I can't even spell looking for. Looking for, and that's the, uh, here you go. So we, I used char at before in, 
in an example last lecture, I think. Um, but basically, what it does is it gives us gives, gives us a character at a specific uh, location. So if uh, if i equals zero that it is in the beginning, we're going to get the first character. If i equals one, we're going to get a second character, and, and so on. If you remember, uh, the index starts at zero, so zero is the first character, one is the second, and so on. So what we're doing here, actually, we're just looping through all the characters. Uh, here we're looping through all the characters in, in in the string. So we go from zero, the lowest index, to um, to just below the the length of the of of the string, which is the highest index, and then we just get the get a character at that index. So our loop here is giving us all the characters. Then when we have when we have the character we're looking for, we want to search the string for for that character, and to do so. We're just going to do something similar, uh, like this. And there we go. And if the character we're looking for equals the uh, uh, character at that specific location in the sentence, and then that means that we actually found the correct character. If we're looking for like A, and then we found at index 3 or whatnot, we found another A, then those are the same, and therefore, well, we, we found that character, so, so it, it's fine. Uh, we should increase the, the characters we found. So, found characters, like that. And then we can, in the end, just print it all out. So uh, in the end of, of a specific character we're looking for A for instance and then we do uh, we increase the counter and in the end we can just print out what we have as the counter. Uh, print ln will print it out as a line and then we print out how many characters we found and then we can add like times uh, let's do like that times the um, character we were looking for. So we know what we're actually outputting. We're outputting the amount uh, for this specific character. So right, so what's going on now? We will first create a scanner. We ask the user for a line, uh, uh, well a sentence to search in, and then we just read that. So that's the sentence we are, where we're going to look for characters in. Then we ask the user what characters to search for, and the, uh, the user will enter a string of, of, of characters. We will loop through those characters because we want to find them individually, and uh, we get the character we're looking for, and then we'll just search for that by checking all the characters in the sentence and see if they match. And in the end, we'll print that out. So, so uh, if we compile this, and uh, we need to save it as well. Compilation completed. Nice. And then we run. There you go. So now, um, please enter this sentence to search in. Yeah, let's just go with hello, everyone. Like that. And then I want to search for like E, L, and O, like that. And it's going to say that we have four E's, two L's, and zero, or not, not zero, two O's. Um, which should be all right. Uh, so we have four E's, so that, um, that's correct. We have one E there, one E there, one there, and one there, and two L's, two, those are in the hello, and two O's, that's the O there, and the O there. So that seems to be correct. Um, pretty straightforward there. We might want to add some comments here about what we're doing. Um, there's not really too much to add, but we can, like, say, a loop through uh, the uh, characters we're looking for. Yes, yeah, 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 so a little comment there. And then um, we can do another one here. So loop through the uh, sentence to check um, yeah, how, how many times we can find uh, the uh, character we're looking for. I don't know. Just to tell us a bit what we're doing there. Uh, but we might want to improve this a bit. Um, it doesn't really matter too much, but if you write big programs uh, that run things a lot of times, like, like it wants to calculate in something very quickly, um, our code here is a bit inefficient. It, like I said, it doesn't really matter at the moment for what we're using it for, and you will have to bother quite a lot about performance 
for it to matter, but I want to show it at least. Each time we're looping through this here, we're going to calculate how long the string is. It's not going to change, it's going to be the same length all the time. And the same thing goes with, with, with the, the length of the character. We're not going to change the length there. So there's no reason for us to calculate that each time we want to compare it with i. And the same thing goes with this. Um, here we calculate it once for each character in the sentence for each character here. So if we have a, a uh, sentence that is 300 characters long and then we search for like uh, 20 characters, then we will uh, check the length of the sentence 6,000 times, even though we know it's not going to change. Um, but like I said, if you're not too keen, uh, well, if you don't bother too much about it, it's not going to be a problem. Uh, but what we could do is like, we have a variable called sentence uh, length, there we go, and then we just create that as soon as we get the sentence from the user. Um, yes, because it's, like I said, it's not going to change. And we can do the same thing here. We um, can do character count and we just do int character count like that equals something like that. So as soon as we calculate the, um, uh, well get the characters from the user, we just count the amount of them and then we can use that instead and the same thing here. But like I said, it doesn't really matter too much, but if you're um, uh, doing something very big that's r running a lot of times, it's, it's obviously more efficient doing it this way because then we don't have to count how long it is. And it's the same thing now, so I can do like hello, hello, and then I search for for H, E, and O, like that. So like that. So just something to to uh, remember that since since this condition is going to be tested each time, it's it's obviously going to have to calculate what it's comparing it with. Right. Um, so now what we can do, I'm going to show you. It's not really a part of this this lecture, but it's a loop. It's it's the fourth type of loop, the for each loop. But for it to work properly, you need to know what arrays are. So it's sort of a bit of an introduction to that. And then I'm going to go through it properly, the for each loop next lecture. But but just to to sort of uh, put these things together, um, give it a bit of a connection. I'm going to 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 introduce it a bit. So what we have here is basically a way of looping through all the characters. We we have int i here. We start at zero, like I said before, and we loop through, uh, from uh, i to uh, to just below the character count. And then the only time we're using i, we're not using it anywhere else than here when we get the character. And then, then we're basically done with i. Uh, we just get the character we're looking for, and the same thing goes with here. And when we do so, when we loop through a sequence of something, and just want to get its elements, then we can actually do so with a for each loop. So we loop through the sequence itself and then just grab each time we loop through it, we get the next uh, element. And in this case, when we loop through a string, we just get the, uh, the shards. But like I said, um, sequence sequences like this um, are you can define those of any types. You can have sequences of integers, you can have sequences of Boolean values, you can even have sequences of sequences of Boolean values, and so on and so forth. But that's the next lecture. So, so I'm just going to give you a quick example here. So, if we have the um, string here called uh, uh, test like that, and then we say like A, B, C, D, F, G, like something like that, um, and now we can do this. So we do SHA, that's the type. So we need to define the type of the, the element. So if you have a string, the the element of, of the string is SHA because we have a sequence of characters. And then we do like, see, yes, that's just the name, that could be anything. Then we do a colon. So so we on the left side of the colon, left hand side, we have the type and the name of, of, of the variable there. And on the, on the right hand side, we have what we want to loop through, which is test. But like I said, the what we're going to talk about next next lectures uh, next lecture uh, are arrays, and that's what you loop through. And the string is not uh, an array, even though it's a sequence or something. But we can convert it to something like that. To, so we can do dot to char array. 
exactly what this is. Well, it's creating these things that are, are called arrays that we're going to dis discuss next time. So we get basically we get a different type of sequence of characters. So we can loop through there and then we just print it all out. Ah. So now it's going to, to each time we loop through, we're going to get a, the next character. So we get A and then B and then C, D, E, F and G. Um, so pretty straightforward. There's like some differences how, how these things actually work. Uh, like the for loop with just an integer and then you refer to the to the character and if you do like this but but we're not going to bother about that at the moment like i said i'm just going to introduce this a bit so we can we can apply this uh to what we have here so instead of looping through there obviously we can't use this trick anymore because we're not actually going to to loop it like that uh but then we can do four if you remember we do four sha and then we uh Put the name of the variable here and you, we can just call it the same here because we're not going to use this line later on and then we do colon there and then char characters because that's uh, the string we want to loop through and then we just do two sha array and that's creating an array and that's what we're going to talk about later on remove that one and then we do the same thing same thing here so now we can do uh, four sha uh, c like that and then we do uh, sentence dot two char array, um, and finally just compare it like so. Compile it, and then we can run it again. And then we search for like E, B, and D. There you go. So one E, zero Bs, and zero Ds as well. And as you can see, it. It's quite easy to see what's going on now, um, because we just loop through it like this. So, so it's quite easy to 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 um, overlook what's going on and things like that. But, but like I said, more to that later. And um, and yeah, now we're pretty much done. Actually, let's let's see what we've been talking about today, because we've been talking about quite a lot, quite a lot of different types of of loops. <coughs> so we started with a while loop. Um, a while loop is going to loop through as long as the condition is true and while it's looping it's just going to run all the statements inside it um, so it's, uh, if the condition is true it's going to run the, the statements inside it and then it's going to shake the condition again running the statements inside it checking if its condition is true if that's the case it's going to end, go on and go on and in the first uh, scenario here we have while true and then dot 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 instead of so, some statements there and those statements are just going to run forever just because the condition is never going to change it's always true when we have, have while true like that then we have while false which is never going to happen or it's not going to run those statements at all just because well the condition is always false, we're going to skip over it right away and just uh, um, continue in the end of, of the code there. Then we have the do while loop, however, that's going to run a bit differently. Instead of putting the while in the beginning, so instead of putting while in the condition there, we put it in the end of the loop instead. And then we to, to put something in the beginning, we just put do there. And then we just put a statement inside, like 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 we do with the while loop. And if we just do, do while true, it's do, going to do the same thing. It will run forever. It's just going to check the condition. It's true. It's going to check the condition and so on and so forth. But when we do uh, do while with for, if we have a false value there in in the beginning, um, it's actually going to run once because the condition is checked in the end. So if you want to make sure that um, your your loop uh, runs uh, through the code at least once even though the condition is false then you use a do while loop so the condition is checked in the end instead of in the beginning so that is quite handy in some uh, some cases then we had the continue uh, thingy and that can be used in all the different types of loops uh, the while loop the uh, do while loop the for loop the for each loop and that's also the case for the break that which we will come to in in a second um, and as you can see in this simple example 
that will print out 1, 2, 4, and 5. When we reach 3, we're not going to print it out because we use continue. And what that does is that we're going to go back to the condition uh, and see if that's still true. And then we're going to run it, start over from the start there. So we, we have x is 1, we increase it to 2, uh, print it out, increase it to 3, and then we get it to continue. So then we go back, increase it to 4, and then print out 4. So we're not printing out 3 in this, this scenario here. Then we had a break as well as I was talking about and it's the same code as the last screen but now we have a break instead of a continue and therefore it's just going to print out 1 and 2. The last time we print out 4 and 5 as well because if you can do continue you will just restart uh, at the condition and run, run again. If you do break you're just going to stop there and just continue after the loop um, and therefore when as soon as we reach 3, x equals 3, then we're going to stop the loop even though the condition allows us to loop as long as x is less than 5. Then we had the for loops, very handy when we want to loop a specific amount of times that we know already. Um, and actually the, the loop you'll see on the screen is actually not correct. Um, I realize now because I well, it was well. I don't know. I failed. Uh, so we declare it with the the um, declaration part, and then we do the um, then we do the condition part, and then we have the modification part, which is for some reason missing here. So this is not going to work at all. To do it properly, you use a semicolon, and then you do uh, then you do the variable name and just change whatever you want. So you can do like i plus plus, which is what I was supposed to be here, but it's missing, which is unfortunately case. Um, and then we have the for each loop, which we will come to more uh, later on uh, in the next lecture. But for now, it's we can use it with strings if we convert uh, the string to a specific type of, of sequence of characters. So we have this uh, string in there, hello, and then we loop through it uh, by doing the type of, of the element of, of the sequence, which is char, because uh, well, a string is a, a sequence of characters, and then we have the name, and we call it C here, then a colon, and then we have the sequence we want to loop through. But if we're working with strings, we have to do uh, the string name dot to char array, and that's going to convert it to the the specific sequence that we want to the, the the type of sequence that we want, and then we're going to print it out in this example, and that's going to give us uh, hello like that in and on different lines because we get one character at a time. And finally I'm just going to um, talk about, a bit about these questions and exercises. You can find them on the um, lecture page. It's the same as, as always. You have a few questions to see if you've learned um, learned what, what, what this lecture is all about. And then you have the exercises to practice a bit uh, on what we've learned and then you had the further explorations where you can continue and explore uh, as a, a task there a little of a little bit bigger task um, and to the question we I have answers uh, it's the answer to the question as well as some description of why that's correct while the uh, the um, the other ones the exercises has some possible solutions to them um, which of course is not the only solution, just yes, because, well, you can code a program in a lot of different ways. And uh, they, so they, that's just one possible solution. But one note this time is that exercise one actually have two possible solutions uh, in the end of the document. So you can solve it in two different main approaches. Um, your, your task is to, to read an, an integer and split it up in a specific way. And you can do so by reading it in as an integer or you can read as a string and think about it as a string and there are two possible ones there so depending on the approach you take you can look at the different possible solutions there uh, but that's about it thank you all for watching this has been coding in a cup java lecture number three loops i've been vswe and i hope you enjoyed it thank you for watching and i hope to see you the next time